Hello and welcome to another Henry County Board of Education board meeting recap, this time for the month of January 2024. I'm Kyle Sears, Executive Director for Communications, joined as always by our Superintendent, Mary Elizabeth Davis. How are you, Mary Elizabeth? Great. Good to see you, Kyle, and Happy New Year to you and to your family, and thank you for joining us for another Board of Education recap. So the board's business for 2024 actually began on January 4th with a special called meeting for the election of officers. Uh, our board elected Sophie Pope as chair for 2024 and Annette Edwards as vice chair for 2024. And that factored heavily into your welcome message for our regularly scheduled meeting on January 8th. That's right. We were able to begin that January 8th meeting recognizing our new officers and pausing to celebrate and recognize the extraordinary leadership of Mrs. Annette Edwards, our past chair for the 2023 year. Mrs. Edwards made history the night of her election as chair of the Henry County Board of Education one year ago, serving as the first African-American female in that officer position. Over the course of the year, so many grand accomplishments occurred under her leadership, culminating with the Governance Team of the Year recognition for the state of Georgia. We were able to celebrate, recognize, and thank her for an amazing year of leadership as chair. Now, also as a part of our welcome, we were able to celebrate another historic achievement, and that was Stockbridge High School's football team. Let's talk a little bit about that. That's right, Mary Elizabeth. We celebrated the Tigers in December as they became the first Henry County Schools football program to reach the GHSA state championship game, capping a historic season where they went 12-3, and finished as the Class 4A runners-up and the Region 5-4A champions. We were really excited and proud of our Stockbridge High School football program. What an excellent program. Congratulations to the coaches and the student athletes. We will always remember this as a winning season that we got to celebrate alongside with you. We concluded our January welcome with celebration of our mental health and wellness facilitators, law enforcement officers, and of course, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which we will celebrate next week. Let's hear more from Mary Elizabeth. Now this new year season is always full of a time of reflection and forward focus. And as we reflect this month, I'm reminded of the powerful words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the true goal of education. A powerful champion for public education and for opportunities, access and outcomes for all, we remember Dr. King's legacy. Well, that got us into the business of the Board of Education for this first meeting of 2024, and we began with an academic and operational continuity briefing as it relates to the cyber incident detected on our network just two months ago. The update was really focused on the work that occurred over the break in order to position this organization to begin opening our internet into a wide open internet space. Now, what we've seen occur has been incredibly effective. Each of our uh, supplemental security solutions were effectively deployed over the holiday break. It positioned us to establish wide open access to the internet at eight locations on Monday, January 8th. Once deemed successful, this will now position us to phase uh, a rollout until all of our campuses and facilities once again have typical and normal operations of their internet access. Now for a full academic and operational continuity briefing, we invite you to visit our website where our entire cybersecurity incident remains um, kept up to date for you. While we're starting a new year, we're preparing for a new school year here in Henry County Schools, and that is the 2024-2025 school year, which starts August 1st. Our Chief School Leadership Officer, Mary Ann Suddeth, provided an extensive report looking into a lot of the implications of the coming school year, particularly as it relates to Impact Academy. That's right. So um, as part of our preparations for the new school year, we had a couple of updates regarding our Impact Academy, which has served as a program here in Henry County Schools for some time. Our K-5 program actually emerged in response to a worldwide pandemic and providing a long-term solution for our students to access um, a virtual environment in those elementary years. Each year we have been phasing out a grade and we did have discussion with the Board of Education about the phase out of grade three for this coming year. 
Grades four and five will remain intact for this coming school year, and our students who have been learning at our Impact Academy program can look forward to that. Now, our 612 program has been a program for more than a decade and is a highly sought after academic program. And as such, the board has been considering when might be the right time for this transition to occur from a program to a full school. Well, board discussion occurred at the January meeting and the board is prepared to receive a recommendation that the Impact Academy program six through 12 become a full school for the 24-25 school year. This is a milestone moment. While Impact Academy has been such a sought after academic environment, now converting to a school environment with a school PTO and a school council and, and clubs and activities for students and a real identity around school colors and a mascot and graduates who will have a transcript and a diploma that reference their education at Impact Academy. Now, this process to move from a program to a school will require the board to take action on a resolution in February and then an application to the Georgia Department of Education for the establishment of the school program. We are on pace to do that in time for the 24-25 school year and communication to families should be unfolding. Our Board of Education had some discussion about this important milestone moment and let's take a listen. I, I am grateful for what we are doing. Um, you know, we, we, one of the tenets of this governing body is about accessibility uh, across the district. And I'm grateful that we are moving to a high level of accessibility um, for an access for our students. And I think what we're doing here with Impact Academy is good. I know it's hard to believe we're preparing for another school year, but as always, our Be Ready Day One resource, which will begin being updated in February, is the one-stop shop for all your information about back to school as you proceed over the next several months with the online registration process. So from there, we move to the board having discussion around the FY25 budget priorities. January is the time where our chief financial officer is able to set the table for board discussion around their priorities and continuing to invest in the community-inspired strategic plan. Our Chief Financial Officer, Shanika Clay, provided this report, and let's take a quick look. While the strategic plan is a critical input into the budgeting process, it is not a static plan. It continues to be informed by the community through consult with board members, schools, and families. Insights that are gained through assessment of progress of student priority outcomes from teacher and leader advisories and from community cluster conversations. Additionally, emergent priorities are articulated by board members through dialogue and study session meetings and in consult with the superintendent during a gender review. In review of this board's unified priorities, there are three areas that I would highlight. First, we will continue to support and will strengthen investments in academic and wellness supports for our students. The board is unified in its commitment to fund the community-inspired strategic action plan, which calls for expanded investments in reading, writing, foreign language, and STEM. Additionally, the board has directed the superintendent to review strategies to retain and enhance staffing aligned to student support and wellness, such as the workforce supporting exceptional student education and mental health of our students. Next, Rooted in the board's belief that effective teachers, leaders, and staff produce excellent results, the board has directed the superintendent to prioritize investing in competitive compensation for employees. It is worth noting that this Board of Education has demonstrated its commitment to recruit, support, retain, recognize, and invest in employees over the past seven budget cycles. Additionally, we will investigate retention strategies and opportunities to recruit and develop the teaching workforce. Last but not least, safety continues to be a paramount concern to this board. Building upon prior investments in physical infrastructure, the board has charged the superintendent to continue the planned expansion of the SRO unit in pursuit of reaching a ratio of one officer for every 1,000 students. Additional investments in infrastructure will also continue to be evaluated. As our community has become accustomed, we have a web page specifically for updates as we progress through budget season. Please visit the URL below.
Ms. Clay's report led into our Chief Operations Officer, Josh Malcolm's regular construction and East Blast report, and that concluded our informational and operational items leading into the business items. That's right, and the first business item was the board taking unanimous action to support the extension of a one-time pay supplement that was initiated by the governor back in December. Now this one-time pay supplement is actually a reflection of the state of Georgia allocating $4.1 million to Henry County Schools in order to extend a $1,000 one-time pay supplement to all employees. Now, Henry County Schools employs more employees than what the state allocates and therefore an additional $2.8 million was necessary for the board to authorize in order to extend that supplement to all employees. This is just really a moment of recognition for the vital role that professionals in public education play every single day and particularly here in Henry County where our team of public education professionals is the best in the business. Now this one-time pay supplement is accompanied by an FAQ that you can find on our website and I'd invite you to visit that for more information. Our business items concluded with the board's approval of cooling towers for two of our elementary schools leading into our evening meeting, which as always begins with inspiration. That's right. Take a look at the Unity Grove Elementary School Choir. It's like a Our inspiration led into our awards and recognitions for January, which featured our student athletes, beginning with the Stockbridge football team, who, as we mentioned earlier, had a historic season where they finished as the runner-up in Class 4A. Then we recognized all of our region players and coaches of the year for the various fall sports, as well as several athletic directors who received new certifications and recognitions as ADs of the year for their regions. And as always, we concluded our meeting with the following new leaders. Congratulations, and we expect nothing short of immediate impact for you in Henry County Schools. Well, thank you for joining us for the board meeting recap for this first meeting of 2024. We are optimistic that this year ahead is going to be the best one yet. We're going to continue winning for kids. While this was just the board recap, you can view the entire board meeting on our website. Also, before we let you go, we encourage you to follow us on social media. That's all from Henry County Schools today. Remember, we are always in pursuit of exceptional and we'll see you next month.